Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to cover one of the most devastatingly fun Magic and Necromancer builds you can possibly run in this current patch, and it's also going to carry over to the next one. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoyed making them. Now a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into this build. Guys, I don't just slap a build on and say, oh, here it is, try it out for a day, day and a half, no. I've spent a week on this build and I tried to make it as off meta as possible, but I keep coming back to the exact same build. I've tried running the Ritualist, I've tried running a Master's Inferno staff for the CC with Ritualist, all kinds of different sets. I've literally tried so many sets to make this class very, very viable in PvP from a 1vx standpoint and also a group play standpoint. So this build is the best of both worlds. You can play this solo with a little bit of tweaking and you can also play this in group play and make this into like a semi bomber with also a little bit of tweaking. So without further, further ado guys, let's hop into it. Now, take a look at the character sheet. Uh, here's all of our stats completely unbuffed. Food wise, we are running Bear Haunch. It is really expensive, but you absolutely need stamina sustain because we are using the Alliance Spell Drought Potions for our crit chance on our front and back bar as well as our major sorcery you kind of have to run these potions because you don't have enough slots in your bar if you don't in my opinion for the mad crow anyway so uh the stat attribute points i am a breton okay i try to get around 30 k health now if you want to make this into uh just like a straight up bomb build like don't go breton i am breton by the way if you want to go something like a Yeet or dark elf you know something that's really going to bolster your damage if you want to play with someone now if you want to play by yourself i do highly suggest breton because it is going to offset a lot of the negative effects of the vampire passives yes we are a vampire this is one of the very few builds or classes I would actually suggest running Vampire on. It really helps with your mitigation and your sustain is through the roof anyway on the Necromancer. So even when you're running a Breton, you know, kind of offsets it. It's, it's not too bad. Now I'm running the Atro. If you want to run this like like in a bombing play style, just, just put on the Shadow Mundus, okay? But since I do, you know, pretty much 99% of my content solo, um, I do need to have a little bit of sustain for those elongated fights. So I'm opting for the Atro with this. And then everything fully buffed up. We get like over like 2200 magic recovery. Stamina recovery gets bolstered to continuous attack, yada yada. Uh, spill crit, that's when get bumped up to like 28 or whatever. And plus all your necromancer passes when you hit people like really low health, you get like 30 or 40% crit chance, something like that. Uh, it, it's pretty insane. Kind of take a look at our resistances. Um, this is without a resistant flesh as well. So um, this will go up to over 30K with our Breton passes. Physical resist around 24K, that's not too bad. But what, where the mitigation really comes in is the Vampire Undeath passive, you know, stage 3 on this build. So you get that 30% damage mitigation, you know, at the cost increase of your ultimate and your abilities, which really isn't a big deal on the Necro as long as you're running the uh, the Breton. So this is why I would suggest is an all-round race, is the Breton with the Atro, with Smoke Bear Haunch. Um, again, you need the stamina sustain because you do have a couple stamina abilities. You have to abuse, and then you also roll dodge, break free, yada yada, and open world. So... Now, when it comes to the sets, you can probably already tell this is very basic. There is no round breaking set that I'm running here, guys. I've tried out literally every single set combination. This is works best for me. If you have success with some other set, some other layout, man, that's awesome. More power to you. But man, it has been a struggle. 
Now let's take a look at the sets. Now there's nothing groundbreaking here, guys. If you take a look at any Magic and Necromancer build, they're at least running one of these sets. If they're not, it's very off meta. Kudos to them because it's very difficult to not run one of these two sets. All right, so front bar, we are actually running dual wield Plague Break. Now you can swap this out instead of Plague Break. You can swap this out to Vicious Death if you want to run this as kind of like a bombing sort of build. But since I'm playing this as kind of like a neutral game type of build, whether you can play this solo or with, you know, two, three, four man groups, you know, whatever. Um, I'm opting for Plague Break on this one. It's very, very strong because it does inflict everyone with a disease status effect. Yes, it can be purged, but by the time they get hit with this combo, they're dead anyway. So in case if you guys saw in the clips at the beginning, there was multiple Earth Cores that would proc. When you get the Major Defile debuff on you, that's when reduce your healing received. So it's very, very helpful for that as well. They changed it to where Play break there you don't just hit one person with it at a time anymore if you use any cleave abilities or aoe abilities it affects everyone so everyone is going to have a status effect on them on top of you know uh healing receive which is really going to help during these and we also did bomb the emperor <laughs> that was not a joke i didn't know he is the emperor at the time actually until i went back and looked at the campaign pretty funny stuff so traits wise learn home for your main hand sword and then offhand running mace sharpens uh, you could probably run mace get a little more penetration but so with the 500 balor ultimate with this build you do get around 22,000 spell and physical penetration so it's, it's very very high up there you don't really need any more than that back bar we're running ice staff of dark convergence now the reason i like running an ice staff is because i can proc my berserker enchantment on the back bar uh very consistently to help amplify your burst a little bit more um, now you can run sword board if you really wanted to um, but the thing is, guys, if you run Sword and Board and you need your magic back, there's nothing you can really do to get your magic back. You can't heavy attack with your dual wheel bar and you can't heavy attack with your Sword and Board bar. So that's another reason I like running Ice Staff, just so I have some sort of guaranteed magic return. Monster set, of course, terrain, battle orcs, terrain, tri sets, and all the big pieces. We're running five medium, one light, and one heavy as our weights reinforced traits on the chest and ideally you want to have everything well fitted other than that um, i do have a couple in pin on just because i don't have the transmute stones and yeah i do have one purple plague break boots i need to upgrade this and it is actually driving me crazy but uh, it is what it is all right so next set we're running the sea serpent's coil and uh, this is very very strong you may think the snare is too hard to work around but since we're running race against time you really don't notice a snare all too much and the whole point of this build is like a turn and burn as you saw in the clips or you can initiate it really doesn't matter the trick with sea serpent squirrel is um if you never get back up to full health when you're taking damage sea serpent squirrel won't proc so as long as you're really cheeky about maintaining your health pool right below 100 percent you actually won't get that snare on you but when you're ready for your burst heal yourself up to 100 percent then Sea Serpents will proc, and so you get the Major Courage, Major Berserk, and then you can go in for your burst. So you can actually play around the snare and like not have it on you when you don't need it to be slowing you. When you're trying to line of sight, right? Just don't heal yourself up to full. 90, 80%. It's hard. It's easier said than done, but that's the best way to play around Sea Serpents. Cool. If you don't like it, this adds so much damage to your burst around, to your burst, around 15% increased damage. So um we got ring of dark convergence for our jewelry you want harmony traits on everything because yes this is a harmony build i've tried not running harmony and just run infuse spell damage but nothing hits harder than this if you get one crit with your boneyard your avid boneyard harmony man they're they're dead it's gonna crit for 14 15k on top of everything else someone's gonna die and of course you guys saw with the coal overload and plague break they're just out of 5000 there's not much that they can do now you can again push the damage on this build a whole lot higher but guys you saw in the clips you don't need it right you really don't need it so you can funnel all the extra damn what you would have put into your damage right you can filter that into your sustainability and your survivability that's entirely how you want to play the build i mean this is again this is just kind of like a reference for you guys to kind of build off of and tweak some things and you know just kind of suit your play style you know what i mean so this is my play style this is why i like to run now when it comes to the skills there are some pretty juicy skills um i kind of want to go over it's very cut and paste i mean this is necromancer it is what it is this is a defined play style and um, you either love it or you hate it all right so we're running mortal pool on our front bar the reason we're running Mortal Coil on our front bar is actually because we have Dark Convergence, the five piece on our back bar. It is very important when you're on your back bar 
to not have any AoEs to accidentally proc Dark Convergence. And a rule of thumb, something I figured out is, if you're on your back bar and you activate a synergy, it will actually drop down your Dark Convergence and you mess up your combo pretty easily that way. So on your back bar, you want to avoid having any AoEs as possible besides your Pestilent Colossus, which we'll cover in a moment. That's why I have Mortal Coil on my front bar instead of my back bar. So that's why this is here. Stalking Blast Bones does by far the most damage. Uh, it, it's just better than the other more. Um, now, there's a lot to talk about Ru Ruinous Scythe. So this is probably the strongest ability in the kit. The utility this provides is absolutely amazing. Now, the Necromancer does lack a reliable form of crowd control. Yes, you have your totem you can drop down, but again, it's not very reliable. That requires people to be inside of it. Now, with Ruinous Scythe, so go over the damage it inflicts them with the hemorrhage stats effect reducing the health by 10 percent which is amazing for your burst but it also inflicts everyone with the off balance stats effect and you can get really cheeky with this so when the off balance stats effect is proc if you want to really go into a bomb build right you can use the cp passive exploiter pass to give you a 10 percent increased damage if you really want to go that route but the main reason i like using this is because when you use it on normal opponent, it procs the off balance status effect and then if you medium weave right after that, it will actually stun your opponent. So that is a good cheeky way to get a CC when you need it, okay? Yes, the off balance cooldown is much longer than the CC cooldown, but if you're in desperate need to stun someone, this is a really good way of doing that. Also, when you go in for your burst, sometimes you have to risk it for the biscuit. You have around 3 seconds to set up your bomb. And while you're on your front bar, you have to spam two or three times, you know, your, your AOE spam will just make sure everyone is AOE down. What Ruin the Scythe does, it inflicts bleed damage, just pretty decent, you know, cleave damage, but also heals you for everyone hit, allowing you to stay on your front bar and keep spamming off your AOEs in case you're getting pressured by someone else that's not caught in your bubble, okay? So that's why I really like this ability. It, it does everything. It's a CC. It ensures that there's always a status effect on your opponents, and you can also use it to set up a uh, CC, which is pretty strong. Now, don't laugh at this. Uh, this actually hits kind of hard, so... The way I like to play the build, this is a flex bot, okay? The way I like to play Necromancer, I like to play a neutral, like, okay, since I don't have my burst combo fully up, what can I do as a filler? Now, if you're on dual wheel, dual wheel will give you uh, like 8 to 10% more damage when you compare that to a lightning staff, so definitely go dual wheel for this build. And Ricochet Skull is just some sort of range filler that you can toss in with your rotation. So you're going to blast bones, ricochet, you know, you know, yada yada, whatever. Because you'll run into opponents who just, just get away from you, who's going to kite you. So you need to have some sort of range pressure to kind of keep up with them. This is there for that. So you guys don't have to run this. You can run whatever, some other damage ability. I mean, it, it, that's why I like to run. I think it's pretty cool. Now, I did try a Ritualist set. And a Ritualist, so Ricochet Skull, if you guys are unfamiliar, if you want to run a dueling build, a very niche dueling build by using the, uh, the Blast Bones Ultimate on the back bar. Really funny, by the way. The Ritualist increases your pet damage, okay? Ricochet Skull counts as pet damage, so this is 15% more damage, making it the best spammable in the entire game for the Necromancer if you choose to run the Ritualist. Just, you know, some food for thought. Now, Avid Boneyard, uh, they did fix most of the bugs with this. Um, essentially, you're going to toss this down after you toss Frank, and you're going to activate the the uh, the combo. So I'm just going to go quickly go over the combo for you guys who may not be familiar with it before we continue with the rest of the skills, which are, you know, pretty copy pasta. So, your basic combo, have everything up, okay? You'll want to have your Blast Bones all ready. You'll want to swap to your back bar. You'll want to light attack, drop your Colossus, swap to your front bar, drop your Avid Boneyard, okay? And then you'll want to cleave, and then after you cleave, you'll activate your Synergy. The reason you want to do it in this fashion is because that cleave is going to reduce their maximum health from your scythe by 10 percent and then you do all the damage on top of that so if you do it in, in the reverse order you're going to be missing out on a little bit of your damage so here's the full combo have your aoe's up you know kind of whatever fly attack cleave and then you want to synergy on top of that so if you time out everything perfectly you're going to have a blast bonus hit you're going to have a deep uh, a shitly debuffed opponent they're, they're going to have literally everything on them they're going to have a concussed they're going to have 
the disease status effect, the off balance status effect. Um, if you're lucky, you may even get minor brittle from the from the frost damage. You know who knows. But they're going to have the major uh, debuffs from the Pestilent Colossus, and then all that's going to hit at once. And then you just sit there and spam away. And the whole time you're spamming away, it's also going to heal you, so you can apply a lot more pressure on your front bar during your burst combo just to make sure everyone's dead. And um, that's the basic combo. Now you can line up other combos. For example, um, with the off balance stats effect, you can do. Uh, so, for example, if you want to line up a burst combo with your avid bone yard and your stalking blast bone, so you'll have the off balance stats effect on them. You'll wind up a blast bone, do a heavy attack into that, do a heavy attack into a ricochet skull. So, when you heavy attack, this one CC them is when you hit by, by the blast bones, and while they're on the ground, you can drop down your grave robber and activate it. That's kind of like a little mini burst combo in case you don't have your ultimate up to apply some pressure to people. You know, just uh, the more you know, uh, those two little combos will they'll carry you, they really will. So, uh, on to the back bar now. Um, we have race against time. This is pretty much essential. This will give you minor force, but more importantly, it's going to give you major expedition. Um, we are a little squishy on this build since I'm not running a defensive back bar set like Mars Bomb or Rallying Cry. So you have to have a little bit of mobility on this build to reduce the amount of incoming damage. I mean, it is what it is. This is one of the very few times I've ever used Rat, and it's 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 pretty much essential on the macro. I mean, it really is. So we have resistant flesh. This thing requires a lot of magic to cast. You do not want to be spamming this. Now, a um, good rule of thumb is when you go in for your burst combo, if you're missing, missing any health whatsoever, just pop this because whatever it heals you, it's going to give you a little bit of added resistance as well. Um, of course, we have Resolving Vigor on back bar, Summoner's Armor, and then we have Spirit Guardian. I really like this one because it does give you the damage mitigation, you know, the 10% damage mitigation, which is pretty huge as well. And then last but not least, we have the Pestilent Colossus, and, and this is the major, the, the bread and butter, all right? This guy does literally everything, you know, applies major vulnerability in, in, to enemies hit, increasing their damage taken by 10%, you know, on top of everything else you have going on, your battle result, again, if you have a 500 battle result, that's like a thousand weapon and spell damage, plus almost 15 to 16k extra spell and physical pin, you know, something like that, you guys can do the math. It's a hellacious amount of damage. With Battle Orgs alone, a 500 Battle Orgs alone equates to about 30 to 40% increased damage on your burst. So be very conscientious on how much you save up for your Battle Orgs. You may think, oh, what's the difference between 250 ult and 500 ult? It's a lot of damage difference. So just keep that in mind. All right, we went over the potions. So let's hop into the champion points here. Now these are what I choose to run, so you obviously want to run a cold overload because anytime you have a stats effect on someone, uh, they'll explode and you know, deal oblivion damage. This goes through corrosive, this also goes through misform, by the way, it's pretty funny. You get those tanks that just sit in misform, they just kind of sap everyone, you can't kill them. Well if you, dry, if you blow people up around them in misform, they're going to die, it's pretty funny. And then you want to run Biting Aura as well as Mastered Arms. Now, uh, most of your, I think all of your buddies will be direct damage, so you're going to get 6% from there. And then also biting, biting Auras. Now, if you're running in a group, you, since I'm running solo law, I do run Ironclad, a defensive CP. But if you are running in a group, you can run, not fighting finesse, you could run Exploiter. So anytime you inflict damaging one, the off balance status effect increases the damage that they receive by 10%. So this is a huge damage buff as well if you want to go that route. A red tree, I'm always running this little trifecta here. We're running survival instincts, and then we're also running relentlessness, sustained by suffering and pain's refuge. I think these are some of the most stat dense. CPs that you can possibly run and uh, that's why I run them uh, green tree you really don't matter Just be sure you have your war mount gifted rider um, Steeds blessing just so you can run to your death quicker and running simulator and Cyrodiil and then liquid efficiency if you choose to running more expensive potions, right? and uh yeah that about does it for the build guys there's really nothing else to note um i really hope you enjoyed you know today's video if you guys have any questions please let me know down in the comments do not forget to enable the bell and notification icon do not forget to follow me on twitch i'm trying to get to a thousand followers that would be fan freaking fantastic and always a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat you guys are absolutely amazing i love each and every one of you and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace